I've got over there the drumstick of the uh, Rick Allen, who is the one-armed drummer from uh, Def Leppard. Yeah. And it's cool. Like I grabbed the stick after the show, and you only grab one because that's all he plays with. <laughs> and I had this little stick, stick man uh, drawn on it, like obviously is like branded on it, and it says Rick Allen, Thunder God. This wow. little one-armed stick. No ways. I tell you what, it was the best. Uh, there, without a doubt, uh, my unfair advantage in life was that when other people were sent to university, I was sent as part of a road crew. I cannot, I, I cannot explain to you the, the work ethic that gets instilled in you. Uh, that obviously, you don't have working hours at all. Mm. Uh, you do what needs to be done to get shit you know, working. Uh, the, the idea of like building something and then seeing these thousands of people in front of you. I mean, well, we have a structure that we follow with people. So we say that... and. I certainly don't want to say that this is the only way that you should write a presentation. But what I will say is this is a way that you could always write any presentation. So you can use this tool. And we talk about it as care, believe, no do. So you have four steps in a presentation. Job number one, you have to give them a reason to care. Then you have to give them a reason to believe. Then you have to tell them what they need to know. And then you have to tell them what they need to do. Because when I started the business, I wore a suit and tie every day. Uh, and I, I, I stopped that because... When I wore a suit and tie, when you're a 23-year-old and you walk in, we were having meetings with guys like Jacko Marie, the CEO of Center Bank, and Miles Ruck, the CEO of Center Corporate Merchant Bank. When you walk into their office and you're 23 years old and you're wearing a suit, they know exactly where to place you. Then I looked like a, a graduate or an intern. I looked like them, but young. And they speak to you that way. But when you walk into their meeting and you're a business owner and you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt and you're walking into a boardroom of a big bank, now they just assume that you're this creative, different genius. Like you must be something if you're willing to walk into their office <laughs> dressed like this. I'd far rather try something and fail it than uh, not try it. Because I talk about this idea that everything you say no to in your life, uh, at that point you say no to it, you're writing a check payable later in your life to regret. And, you know, I love the idea. I think capitalism ultimately will be one of the shortest, it'll be a very important period of human history but it'll be a very, very short-lived one. You know, the true capitalism as we know it will exist for maybe, let's say we've got another 50 years running that way before we have to have some sort of universal basic income or something will make, uh, will kill capitalism as we know it. So you'll have this kind of two, 300 year period in, of history that will mm -hmm. just have been this significant in that the switches it flicked and how it changed us. But I'm far more excited about what we start solving when, when we take that out, when we no longer have to worry about living about paying the bills and, you know, staying alive. What kind of crazy rad shit are we going to solve then? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, that, and, that, and there'll, there'll still be suffering. There'll still be all of those things. Everything will be consistent, but then we'll be solving really meaty, meaningful problems. And I'm so excited. And, you know, I, I would love to live to see some of that happen.